Using design accelerators to leverage standards and advanced placement tools makes it much faster to create my metal frame. But, like all design accelerators, the real power comes in when it's time to edit. Rather than creating a series of construction planes and splitting bodies to fix some of the elements of my frame, I can zoom in to see that there are problems with the 2x1 sections that go around the top of my frame as they intersect one another and intersect the vertical frame members. I'll use the miter tool, which allows me to select two frame members, establish an offset if I want for a weld gap, and choose whether or not this miter will be divided equally between both sides or applied to one side or the other. So I'll select one frame member, then the other. I'll keep my zero offset and apply this. Then I can continue on, even using the right-click menu to apply. I'll grab the other end of the frame and apply the miter. And in no time, I have that part of the frame cleaned up. Next, I need to pull back the height of the vertical members so that they support the top frame members without intersecting. For this, I use Trim and Extend. This tool will allow me to choose all four vertical frame members, and then when I'm ready, I'll select the face to trim to or to extend to. I'll select the bottom of the green frame member. When I click OK, it will pull back the height of the vertical frame to butt into it. I can also apply an offset if I choose. The final change I want to make to the individual geometry is to shorten the small angled portions. To change the length, I'll use the Length and Shorten tool. I'll set my extension value to a negative value since I want to pull the frame back, and then I'll pick the end of the frame that I want to affect. This is pick sensitive, so selecting the end of this short frame and applying it will pull that end back one inch. I'll do the same here and to the two ends on the other side. Now my geometry changes are complete and my frame is ready to be used. However, this refers us back to one of the biggest advantages of using Frame Generator to begin with, which is that we can generate a metal frame, set up all the individual components to be related to one another correctly, and yet be able to change the whole thing very quickly based on the skeleton. For my design, I use the solid model as a skeleton. If I turn the visibility back on, activate it, and go under the extrusion to change the sketch that defined it, I can make modifications to the overall length of the frame and to the overall depth of the frame. And when I'm done, it will update the solid model. And when I return to the top level of the assembly, it will update the frame based on the change to the solid model. Making other changes to the sketches, such as modifying the dimension of the height offset will also update the frame. By generating a model that leverages this sort of relationship, it's very easy to build a family of components made up of metal frames that can be edited and modified simply using the parametrics without ever having to modify the details of the individual components again.